Scrolling through my Tumblr dash always make me pick up a million hobbies. Crafting, drawing, writing, you name it. I've tried my hand at a bunch of them through the years, but the one that's stuck the most is cocktail making. I love it. I love learning all about different spirits, different ways flavors balance each other, and trying new recipes. But investing in a million different ingredients when I'm not sure if I'll like a new cocktail is risky. Which is why I love Shaker and Spoon, a subscription cocktail service that helps you learn how to make handcrafted cocktails right at home. Every box comes with enough ingredients to make three different cocktail recipes, developed by world-class mixologists. All you need to do is buy one bottle of that month's spirit, and you have all you need to make 12 drinks at home. At just $40 to $50 per month, plus the cost of the bottle, this is a super cost-effective way to enjoy craft cocktails. And you can skip or cancel boxes at any time. So invite some friends over, class up your nightcaps, or be the best house guest of all time with your Shaker and Spoon box. Get $20 off your first box at shakerandspoon.com diaries. Hello, scrollers and scholars. I'm Lauren Shippen, professional writer who once wrote a paper in college entitled Balls of Thunder and Pussy Galore, Femininity, Masculinity, and James Bond. Wow. Just want to take a step before my intro to say wow to that, and I would like to read it. Thank you. <laughs> and I am Cherokee McAnally, head of entertainment at Tumblr and fan of fandoms. And this is Dashboard Diaries, a podcast for you, the folks who are in this internet bunker with us. We talk about what's going on on our favorite hell site, get into what we like to call tumble lore, do fandom deep dives, and share the times when we've gone feral over a new ship. Hello, Dashers. Editor Lauren here with a quick note. When we recorded this episode, it ended up being so long that I thought it made sense to focus solely on our main topic. So you're about to hear us jump right into that. And one quick clarification. When talking about the data we're using, I keep saying from 2015 or from 2017. That doesn't mean the data is just from that year. I really should have said since because we're working with seven years of data. Okay, that's all. Oh, wait. Also, if you have a fandom question of your own that you want us to explore, please email us at dashboarddiariespod at gmail.com. You can also send a 30-second or less voice memo of your fandom feels, and we may feature it on the show. All right, back to the episode. Okay, so today, Cherokee, we are doing something that has been inspired by a listener email from Lindsay. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for emailing us this and for allowing us to talk about it on the show. I'd initially told Lindsay that, you know, we would we would bring it up in a segment and and try to help her with this this problem that that um, she presented to us. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that we could really make a meal of it. (laughs) So to start out, I'm going to read Lindsay's email in full. Lindsay writes, I know this isn't an advice podcast, but I feel this dilemma particularly suits both of your expertise. This semester, I'm in a pop culture class, and my final project is to make a website that explores the fandom of a media of my choosing, its culture, members, interactions, and how it uses social media. Of course, I want to choose a Tumblr favorite, but I cannot for the life of me pick one. I'm currently oscillating between Supernatural, which I've never watched, but attended Tumblr University on November 5th, 2020. Never forget. Since it is just a wealth of content, or our flag means death as a sort of case study, microcosm of classic fandom. I am, of course, desperate for any suggestions as well. What would you guys choose? So that's the email we received. And we have decided to run through what we're calling the ultimate fandom gauntlet and try to to completely unscientifically pick the most interesting fandom for Lindsay to dive into on Tumblr. So just to give a little bit more context for this website project, uh, Lindsay did follow up with information about the project from this class. For your final project, you will produce original research about the fandom of a band, musical genre, television show, video game, comic series, sports team, or other cultural product. This may be a fandom of which you are a member, but it should be one that you can study with enough critical distance to produce rigorous scholarship. You will study this community's members, what trends can we find in the kinds of people who seem to like this piece of culture, how they express their fandom, websites, zines, gatherings, and what makes this cultural phenomenon meaningful to them. So that is the the basic prompt that we are, are dealing with here. And... Cherokee, our first step was to try and figure out what the top fandoms of all time on Tumblr are in terms of activity. So that was something I threw to you. Can you walk us through the process that you went through to to gather this data? Uh, Absolutely. In order to gather this data, I asked someone else to gather the data for me. Uh, (laughs) Perfect first step. (laughs) Look, Lauren, I got an eight and a half percent on my stats final in college. You did not want me calculating this data. (laughs) 
<laughs> I got a, I think, 37, so... <laughs> same page. Yeah. yeah, same page. <laughs> As I said, this will be very <laughs> We're basing this off of metrics, but also vibes. Absolutely. And so I'll just give you a quick rundown uh, of kind of how we pulled it. So we based these these rankings of fandoms, this list of fandoms, on our fan- weekly fandom metrics list. And if you're not familiar, every week on fandom.tumblr.com, we post lists of the most talked about topics and fandoms on Tumblr of a few different categories. There's musical acts, celebrities, web stuff, K-pop, video games, TV shows, movies, and ships. And so we do a top 20 list every week. And at the end of every year, we do a big year in review aggregating the top of the top. And so we have been doing this weekly since May 2015. And so we have hundreds of weeks of rankings of, you know, features, features in fandom. So we, we essentially aggregated all of these fandoms and counted how many weeks that they were featured and their average ranking out of 20 when they were featured. And this gave them kind of an overall score and rank that we kind of used to calculate uh, the top fandoms of like overall, the top fandoms overall. And that's where the science stops. Right. And so I guess some caveats around this data, it is only from 2015 and the K-pop stuff is only from 2017. Is that correct? Yeah, we launched our K-pop list in May 2017, because K-pop was so popular on Tumblr, it was overtaking our musical acts list. Our musical acts list was entirely K-pop, so we made a K-pop dedicated list uh, and separated that from the musical acts list. So uh, BTS, for example, you know, one of the biggest K-pop bands, was has was on all our musical acts list and all our K-pop list. So we do kind of have like, though there wasn't a list specifically, we were still measuring K-pop. Yeah. Right. Which is a great example of uh, the other, you know, uh, caveat for this data, which is that these are all different lists with different levels of competition, right? So, like, celebrities have, you know, as a category, fewer fandoms across the board than, say, TV shows. And so, as a result, these top 20 fandoms that we've polled only have a couple of TV shows on them because the competition is much stiffer and therefore shows appear on the list less frequently. Yeah. So that's kind of, you know, the the broad data that we're dealing with. Um, but I think it's like a good example of just like the sheer volume at which these things are talked about. And we've pulled the top the top 20 and put them into a bracket. And to your point, BTS was on here twice <laughs> because that's how powerful they are in both <laughs> K-pop and musical acts. And so instead of having BTS on the bracket twice, I've included Our Flag Means Death because obviously that's a much, much newer fandom, but it is something that Lindsay mentioned and could be an interesting case study for sort of uh, a fandom popping up really, really quickly. And so that is on our bracket. And we'll be sharing this bracket on our Tumblr if you would like to do it yourself. But Cherokee, I think I'm just going to quickly run us through the list of fandoms that we're covering, if that sounds good to you. Please do. Okay. Stray Kids, BTS, EXO, Taylor Swift, Harry Styles, Markiplier, Jack Di- Jacksepticeye, Eye, Amazing Phil, Chris Evans, Sebastian Stan, Our Flag Means Death, Five Seconds of Summer, Seventeen, Supernatural, Steven Universe, Critical Role, RWBY, Homestuck, Undertale, and Sims 4, which was such a wild card. <laughs> oh, Simbler, Lauren. Oh my gosh. Simbler. Huge community. Huge thing. Yeah, I love Simbler. And I also came up with a couple of measurement categories for us to look at. So rather than just like looking at the data empirically and saying like, oh, well, BTS appears twice and is one of the biggest fandoms ever. And, you know, they're clearly the winner. There's a couple different categories that I want us to look at and consider as we go through this bracket. The first one is longevity, age, how much material is there to dive into? Because I figure, you know, if you have... 18 years to dive into with something like Supernatural versus, you know, one year, something like Our Flag Means Death, you're going to have different kind of, you know, research to to look into. Second one is overall impact. How much staying power does it have? Has it affected the larger culture? I think is important. And then emotional impact, simply because that was something mentioned in this um, syllabus, the sort of prompt of what makes this cultural phenomenon meaningful to its fandom. And so I, I think that looking at if it's something that is 
popular and enjoyed or something that's truly meaningful to large portions of the fandom, because I do think that those things are kind of distinct. Diversity of expression is the next measurement category, um, which again is sort of ripped from the syllabus. How does the fandom participate? Fanfic, fan art, RPing, gift sets, memes, cons, cosplay, etc. You know, how much different stuff is there for Lindsay to look at? The speed and fervor. Was there an explosion? How much content versus how big is the fandom? Because that could be interesting to study as well. And then wild card, which I included as a category because Sims 4 is on here. I'm just like, is there something surprising about this fandom? Is there something unique? Is, is there a vibe that we think would be worth exploring? Because as we've said, this is, you know, this is going to be a lot of vibe based yeah. stuff. <laughs> Cherokee, is there anything else that you think we should consider as we dive into this? Honestly, Lauren, I think you covered it all in terms of, you know, the breadth of content and ways that users engage, as well as, yeah, taking into consideration the age of the fandom um, and kind of the impact that it's had in the time that it has had as a fandom. So I think those are kind of exactly what you said is really what, what I'm going to be focusing on. And then also... A lot of this is just going to be hearsay because, you know, there's some fandoms on here that I am, mm -hmm. you know, not even soup, like not familiar with at all that, you know, beyond the, the research that I did for this podcast. So I think that'll be really leaning into the vibes. Yeah. And I, I, I spent some time yesterday gathering some additional uh, stats and observations for us um, around... I looked at AO3 numbers. I know this is not Tumblr, but I think that that can be indicative of like a, a fandom's fervor. Um, Tumblr has this great feature when you search a hashtag and it tells you the number of recent posts made and also the number of followers. So I think that's something we can look at. And then also the types of posts, you know, kind of in looking at the, you know, three pages of the most recent posts, what's the kind of stuff that I was seeing. So yeah. if we get stuck, because I think some of these, I think some of these are going to be pretty easy right off the bat. If we get home stuck. If we get home stuck, exactly. <laughs> then we can we can turn <laughs> to those additional stats. <laughs> I've started going tee when I do that, which is even like, more annoying. Um, so no, yeah. that's perfect. Don't don't ever not do that. That's great. <laughs> Cherokee, would you like to to pick a pairing for us to to oh face my gosh, off? First this is with? more exciting than a wine tasting. Pick a pairing. <laughs> okay, I think. I think let's let's start uh, with BTS and EXO. Both K-pop bands. Yes. This feels pretty easy right off the bat. It's and gonna that's, be it's gonna be BTS. Yeah, it's gonna be BTS. <laughs> love love to EXO, but you just can't, like BTS is enormous and powerful and beautiful fandom, and as is EXO's. But <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to be real diplomatic here, but yeah, it's BTS. <laughs> And the way the bracket works, they're immediately facing off against Stray Kids with another K-pop band. I think once again, we can sort of immediately move BTS forward. If Agreed. that feels okay to you. I, it feels great to me, Lauren. I also love Stray Kids. They're great. They've done a lot of uh, Tumblr Q&As, like little Tumblr truth or dares and stuff. They're really fun to work with. Nice. We love you, Stray Kids. BTS moves on to the next round. And and just yeah. for some some you know interesting stats I discovered, EXO slightly predates BTS I believe in terms of its forming, but um, both of them were were formed 2012 2013, which makes them the older K-pop bands on this list. BTS has two million Tumblr followers when you search them on Tumblr, so which is Wild. far and away the the biggest number of followers on this this list mm -hmm. by double. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep, yep, yep. These, yes. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> What's our next pairing? Congratulations. Okay, our next pairing, I think we should just, let's just move down the list. Let's take a Great. gander at Taylor Swift and Harry Styles. What do you think, Jerky? So my vote here is I love both Taylor and Harry. Uh, I would count myself like casually in both fandoms, listen to mm -hmm. the new albums, day they come out. I would say Taylor Swift is the winner here. And I would say that because of how engaged she has been on Tumblr and how she yeah. created this really beautiful relationship with her fandom on Tumblr. Uh, and it's just been like such a special way to see over the years of, you know, like this huge, huge fan community. All love to Harry. I feel like Harry is, you know, like incredible and like the One Direction fandom as well, which I feel like if we had mm -hmm. counted those fandom numbers and tied them in with Harry, that would be an interesting way to look at it as well. But I would say Taylor is just because of the like relationship that she has with her fandom on Tumblr. I totally agree with that. And I think that in terms of engagement also, you know, Taylor has been, she's one of the sort of the, the 
longest standing fandoms on this list because of Mm -hmm. when she released her first album, right? Like she and Supernatural, I think, are the only things on this list that actually predate Tumblr itself. And she's always very good at like involving fans and like the clues Mm -hmm. that she leaves and all of these different things. The one thing that does complicate this for me slightly, I think it is going to be Taylor, but to your point, the One Direction fandom is an incredibly rich text. And especially when you start to, going into the Harry Styles tag, it was a lot of him, but also like naturally there was still a lot of Larry stuff, which is Mm -hmm. the ship of Harry Styles and um, Louis Tomlinson. Did I get that last name right? (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) I think that there is a lot of really interesting scholarship to be discovered there, but I think for the purposes of... Taylor Swift versus Harry Styles. Taylor Swift might be a more interesting, more unexplored venue. Gosh, it's a hard, it's a hard call, but I, yeah, agreed with you. Taylor is our is our winner of this round. All love to Harry Styles, great new album. And as well as being the oldest fandoms on here, both Taylor and Supernatural are the only ones on this list with one million followers. So it's it's those you know sitting close to the top, and then BTS with two million followers on Tumblr, yeah. um, which is just bonkers. <laughs> Up next. Jack Septic Eye and Amazing Phil. What is your familiarity with either of these figures, Cherokee? My familiarity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <tee-hee>. <laughs> uh, it is minimal. I am aware of, I would say I'm more familiar with Phil than I am Jack Septic Eye, just because of Dan and Phil yes. fame. Both also were very, you know, Phil's very active, was very active on Tumblr, really engaged during Dan and, you know, when when he, they were doing Dan and Phil. Um, and so I just think my like awareness of Phil is more than Jack Septic Eye, but I would say it's pretty it's pretty minimal in in both regards beyond the fact that they're they're YouTubers who you know took took their careers far beyond YouTube. Yeah, I would say my familiarity is largely the same. I've not really watched either of these YouTubers, but I am familiar with Phil from Dan and Phil. And in looking at the the state of the the fandoms today, there were a lot of similarities. You know, it was a lot of updates about what they're doing now, some fan art. And I think the biggest thing was that they were mixed in together in sort of a YouTuber fandom. Like a lot of the posts about each of of these people and a couple of the other YouTubers on this list were really crossed over with the other YouTubers. They kind of were all yeah. like a, a monolith on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. I would be inclined to say that Phil edges out Jacksepticeye Eye in this simply because we know the power of shipping on Tumblr. Yeah. And Dan and Phil were such a huge ship, are still such a huge ship, may have actually been a couple or be a couple. It's unclear. <laughs> so I think that that would be, that would be my inclination. He got his start in 06. Jack Septic Eye got his start in 2012. Uh, they have pretty close, you know, neck, neck to neck Tumblr followings. Jack Septic Eye mm-hmm. at 159K and uh, Phil at 143K. So I totally agree with you that, you know, the way that people engage around them is similar. They have, I would venture to say, similarly sized fandoms today. They would be comparable. Yeah. Uh, but the power of shipping and of Dan and Phil that, you know, remains on Tumblr. I mean, ever so often you see Dan and Phil in our top ships list, just like ever so often you see, you know, Larry in our in our ships list for One Direction. I mean, there's still Harry yeah. Potter ships every week. So like the power of shipping, time time has no weight on the power of shipping. Shipping is outside of the bounds of time. Is yes. What exactly. I'm going to go with there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. We've got two more um, figures to for our next bracket, which is Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan, who, to be totally honest, I was sort of surprised to see both of them on this list and to see them as high on this list as they Mm -hmm. are. Chris Evans was the second highest scoring behind Taylor Swift on the list overall from the, the metrics from the the fandom lists. Yeah. What's your, what's, what's your feeling? Shipping. The, the answer is, is shipping. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And I think the power of Stucky has maybe like made both of them bigger than they are as like individual actors. Completely agreed. I mean, it's stuck. I think the real <laughs> sleeper winner in this fandom gauntlet is shipping as a thing. As, as a, a thing, concept. As a concept, yeah. <laughs> I totally agree with that. And it was interesting. In diving in, into both their tags, like, as individual people, the content was basically the same across the board. It was a lot mm-hmm. of, like, gift sets from various movies. It was a lot of photos. It was some interview clips and things like that. A lot of thirst and a lot of 
re- like um, reader fix, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like Chris Evans and you and you imagine sort of being in a, in a couple with him. Then, yeah, a lot of Stucky content. And I didn't actually look up wh- how many followers Stucky has oh, compared good to Chris and S- Sebastian as people. Oh, interesting. Okay. So both Sebastian and, and Chris Evans have over 100K followers in their tag. Stucky only has 45K followers, hmm. which is surprising to me. Yeah. Hard to know what that work here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, is it because there are other t- like other ship tags people are using? But like, it's but no, Stuck- Stucky would be is the, the one. Yeah, would be the main one. Like you could do Steve Rogers slash Bucky Barnes, but I just like it's... I don't see that in use as much. Yeah, that is very interesting. Interesting, interesting. Much All to right. ponder there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, to me, this one kind of co- comes down to just straight numbers, and I think that Chris Evans edges out sebastian stan in terms of like rankings and appearances on lists that that he kind of moves mm-hmm. forward by nature of of simply being more ob- objectively popular yeah i would yeah i would say so this is just a visibility kind of thing because they are so equal uh in yeah. this scenario but yeah i would say agree with you gosh we're, we're we have so much conflict here laura <laughs> i know when is when is the argument gonna come <laughs> I think I have to think at some point we're going to have some sort of disagreement. So I'm yeah. excited for that time to come. This is <laughs> yeah, the let's easiest fight, round, Lauren. right? Like, uh, <laughs> winnowing it down to... Yeah, you're right, to, you're right. You know, to from the first round, I think, is the easiest. Uh, and up next, we have Five Seconds of Summer and Seventeen, which is a K-pop and pop going head-to-head. Yeah, yeah. I was not super familiar with either of these bands, to mm-hmm. be totally honest. I think I've heard like a uh, five seconds of summer song. And I, and I feel like I am have seen 17 on lists of K-pop, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sort of out to sea on this one. How about you? Yeah. So I'm quite familiar with five seconds of summer because, and, and 17 because of Tumblr. We've worked with both. They have both. I don't uh, actually, let me confirm if 17 has a Tumblr. I know five seconds of summer has a Tumblr. They've been active on it for years. This month, oh, they're actually our artist of the month where every year we highlight a new artist and we do like exclusive content releases every week. And behind me, you can see a five seconds of summer IRL poster because we did a five seconds of summer IRL a few years ago. So my vote here is five seconds of summer again, purely because of the way that they engage with their Tumblr fan base. They really like lean into the memes. They respond to the memes. They like, you know, are very in the know and like engaged deeply with their fandom. And 17 again has an enormous fandom is wonderful. Uh, But I would say in this case, my vote is five seconds of summer. You know what? That is good enough for me. <laughs> like, I think I do think that if we're if we are looking at this through the lens, obviously, Lindsay for the project is going to be looking at a bunch of different places where fandoms engage. But mm-hmm. I think if if we are to be the Tumblr experts to help Lindsay decide, then I think yeah. that engagement in Tumblr should have some weight to it. Um, because also, I don't think necessarily they're going to survive the next round. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they may they may just be semi finalist, which is perfectly yes. respectable. I Absolutely. mean, you know, it's an honor just to be nominated on this list. So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Supernatural versus Steven Universe. Cherokee arguments. Oh, gosh. Um, pass. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, before I dive in, I just want to say I think Supernatural is unquestionably the winner here, mm-hmm. despite the enormity of the Steven Universe fan base. And my reasoning for this is going to be length of fandom. I believe, like, again, as you said, Supernatural is one of the few things on this list that superseded, you know, Tumblr existing. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the fact that Supernatural continues to be really high up and really talked about across the platform in a way that I have not seen with Steven Universe. Now, Steven Universe continues to be very popular. It is always on our fandom list, but I feel like in terms of impact of a fandom as a whole like on just fandom as you know an entity supernatural comes out on top like it's kind of synonymous with fandom yeah i i agree with that and i think that i'm sure that as we get further into these into these you know head to heads we'll start to talk more about like the emotional impact and the the mm-hmm. larger cultural impact outside of that fandom yeah and i think supernatural um really has that 
uh, you know, all the way from what became a pretty famous copyright case about um, ABO f- fiction. <laughs> Um, and ABO came from Supernatural. So there's like lots of stuff to dig into there. I will yeah. say my, you know, Lindsay, if you listen to this entire episode, which I hope you do, I think that, you know, there are, are, are points in which to bring up other points of interest when it comes to certain fandoms. Something that really interests me about Steven Universe is the kind of um, uh, discussion that it's created around media, children's media. Mm-hmm. It, it it's a fandom that like a little bit imploded as far as I can tell, like as a very, very outside observer, but it's yeah. also something that's very, very beloved by people. And Supernatural has certainly had its had its share of fandom infighting as well. But I think that there is something in- interesting and unique to Steven Universe and the way in which the fandom had infighting that could be interesting to explore um, yeah. if, if, you know, Lindsay wanted a different direction to go. So... That's just to say that, but yeah, I think I think Supernatural is the kind of the clear the clear pick at this stage of the bracket. On to Ruby and Homestuck. What do you think, Lauren? That's right. This is is pronounced Ruby and not R W P Y. This is hard because I'm not in either of these fandoms. I've not consumed either of these works. Um, Homestuck has become such sort of a known meme and something that feels very intrinsic to Tumblr culture Mm -hmm. as a whole, which is so funny because I literally cannot tell you anything about what Homestuck is about other other than the fact that it involves trolls. Like, that's that's all I know about Homestuck. And yet, I just, like, I know that it's culturally important on Tumblr. It's a very strange thing, whereas Ruby feels a little bit more straightforward to me. Like, I'm sort of mm-hmm. familiar with some of the ships on there. I don't know that I could name any of them now, but, I, you know, I'm kind of familiar with the concept. Yeah, I, I would be probably inclined to say Homestuck simply on vibes, but what do you think? Uh, Homestuck on vibes, Lauren. I right. completely agree. <laughs> and I would say my, like, vibe here is that Ruby and Homestuck both have you know, enormous, well-established fandoms. Ruby is a fandom unto itself. Homestuck has become part of the overall fandom as an entity zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I would say, like, as you said, you know, like, you you can't, like, when you, I think Homestuck now is just the more recognizable, like, even, like, I feel like I know more about Homestuck than I know about Ruby, despite knowing literally nothing about either, and it's just a vibe thing. Like. I think the best way to describe Homestuck for me is that it feels like something that I once was very into and then somebody put a magical curse on me that that means anytime I think about it, I forget everything I know about Homestuck. Like, that's what it feels like, right? It like, feels like something I used to know a lot about, <laughs> but I, I never have. Why is that so accurate? Yes. I, I've, I've been cursed to, to forget yeah. the, the forbidden knowledge. <laughs> like <laughs> The forbidden knowledge. Oh my gosh, so true. All right, our last pair before we go into, I guess, uh, the quarterfinals yeah. is Undertale versus Sim- Sims 4, which I paired against each other simply because they're both technically video games, which I'm going to be honest, Cherokee, I didn't realize Undertale was a video game. I thought it was a Homestuck style webcomic because I'm pretty sure that Homestuck is a webcomic, but also I'm not sure. <laughs> Homestuck is a webcomic. Great. Uh, I found this out via searching it minutes before this podcast great Uh, (laughs) and um undertale yeah i know nothing i genuinely had not heard of until it like what was on this list was not actually even on my radar yeah and i will i will preface that by saying like i don't play video games really i'm not you know i have played the sims because you can play it on your computer um i have never in my entire life lauren completed a game of Mario Kart. I am so bad at it that everyone (laughs) has done all their laps and I'm like run, like I keep like, you know, running off the road. There is just something that does not compute with me and video games. (laughs) So as far as I know, Undertale is a computer, is a game you could play on your computer. It's not a console game. I am a big video game person, but I, I kind of got more into console gaming um, after Undertale came out. And so, like, it's funny to me that in the time that I was playing computer games the most, Mm -hmm. I, like, didn't know Undertale was a video game, but I was very aware of it just because, like, it was something that was being talked a lot about on Tumblr. And so I think as much as, like, my initial inclination was, like, oh, I wanted, I want Sims 4 to, I want to dive into to why The Sims are so popular on Tumblr, I do think that Undertale should get this and here's why there is a twitter account called tumblr sexy man of the day 
Mm -hmm. And they recently did a similar, I think, kind of bracket style thing or sort of competition of all the Tumblr sexy men, which we're going to do an episode about what exactly that means at some point. And the, I believe, the character who won was Sans from Undertale. I think that's how you pronounce the name. I'm assuming, assuming it's like Sans, like Sans Serif. But yeah, Sans from Undertale is kind of like a classic, weird Tumblr sexy man. And so mm. I'm going to make an argument for Undertale for this simply because of like the strangeness of it compared to what I was like exploring in the Sims in the Sims fandom. I had the same inclination to just be like, give it to Sims. I love Sims. Uh, but I completely agree with you that also there's something unique about the fact that Undertale has established like characters, right, that you pick, uh, presumably. Um, correct. I know it's an RPG, so I don't know if you create your own character, but there's like characters in the game. There are characters that exist that multiple people know of in Undertale. I'm right. going to make that call. In Sims, it's create your own entire world so there really isn't like it's a very individual fandom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whereas i see even though like you can like now play you know create a sim city play with other people but you're creating you know it's so unique to the players uh where i feel like undertale is just a little more uh conducive of like creating that kind of fandom environment through like the shared knowledge of characters and worlds and spaces totally yeah, I, I I I agree with that. I think there's more to more to explore. All right, working a little bit backwards, we've got some of the the because it's twenty twenty fandoms. We've got a couple of now, yeah. like, I guess like fa like really quick face off rounds to do in the smaller brackets. So working backwards, Homestuck versus Critical Role. Okay, so my vote here is going to be Critical Role, mm -hmm. and. Why? It, Critical Role is one of the most popular fandoms overall on Tumblr consistently. It is like, it went from me having never heard of it to me recently trying to get into it and realizing that there are hundreds of three to four to five to six hour episodes. Holy moly. And so I just think just the sheer volume of the content with just the way that I have seen... God, it's a hard because I'm saying this and I'm like, fuck, like Homestuck is such an enormous fandom. Like, it's really hard to make this comparison. But I will say that, like, the consistency with which I see Critical Role topping, you know, Week in Review, ships, uh, you know, web stuff lists, everything. And I really think that it's only going to continue to to get so much bigger. Uh, my vote here is going to be Critical Role. And honestly, once again, based on vibes of just kind of working in this space for a few years, Critical Role has been brought up a lot more often than Homestuck. Uh, when, you know, when looking into fandoms, when talking about fandoms, and again, They've been really, I like, it's hard for me to like separate the like, we've worked with them in the past. We, they've been really engaged on Tumblr. And I know, I mean, Homestuck is also organically just active on Tumblr. I am, I am convincing myself and like taking, I am like having a war with myself here, Lauren. Please stop me. And I have, I actually, I, I'm not positive. I could be swayed here. I, so, so here's what it comes down to for me. I think, I think I, I unsurprisingly agree with you just because of the sheer, for me, it's like the sheer sort of like, power of critical role they've had they had the most successful kickstarter campaign of all time i believe like they they Whoa. got like a million dollars in kickstarter for their animated show and then they ended up selling that animated show to amazon like and it's you know it all started as a D, &D game and yeah with, among some friends and so i think for me i think if we were having an argument around which fandom has had a larger cultural impact on Tumblr as an ecosystem, I mm -hmm. think that would be kind of difficult. Yeah. I think if we're looking at it from a scholarly standpoint of which fandom would be more interesting to look at simply because of all of the different, t like, places it touches in terms of, like, emotional impact, commerce, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, yeah. like, talk, like the, how much it's talked about, the people involved, I think Critical Role slightly spans over more of those things and therefore there was more material to look at and to your point like it's been going for for years and years and years and there's hundreds of hours long episodes mm -hmm. that i think for me i think it's critical critical role yeah it's kind of like it's beyond just this title at this point it's like it's like a you know 
there's a word like in just not industry unto itself, but it's like it's an entity I, unto itself. Yeah, now. I think, and I yeah, think there is a little bit of an industry, and I think also it had a huge impact on actual play, podcast streams, all the kind of stuff being mm-hmm. popular. I think it had a huge impact on D and D. And I also think, yeah, considering the fact that this is a D and D show, and D and D is also a huge fandom and a very popular. Would you consider? Like people who play D and D a fandom, I think I would. I I think just like TTRPGs in general, yeah, are, which is tabletop role playing games for those of you who are maybe are not familiar, which encompasses D and D. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a critical role. Yeah. Our next mini face off is between our flag means death and five seconds of summer. All right. Ooh, this this is a hard one because obviously. Five Seconds of Summer has the leg up in terms of just length of existence of the fandom. But, and like, and uh, same, you know, similarly to One Direction and, you know, some of our other big band, like, fandoms, there's shipping, there's memes. But I would say our flag means death, maybe the sleeper winner here, because as, like, as we were talking about, as, like, a microcosm of fandom and, like, the way that the fandom went from zero to a hundred and continues to be so huge. Like I think, you know, this will continue to be one of the biggest fandoms on Tumblr. It's just getting started. Mm -hmm. And so I think I am going to also factor in fandom potential, the power and swiftness of that fandom, which like I'm is what got that show renewed for a second season, you know, is the power of, of that fandom. And so I think, yeah, uh, our flag means death is my vote here and not, not just for sentimental reasons, because I did love the show. I completely agree. And I actually, I have an argument in support of Our Flag Means Death for this purpose, but I'm going to save it for the next round. All right. So let's just move Our Flag Means Death forward, which means we have only one more mini face-off between Markiplier and Amazing Phil. Another another YouTuber head-to-head. Yes. What do we think? What do we think? So I'm going to come right out and say again that this is something that I don't have a lot of (laughs) of knowledge around. My vote is Phil because I think he came during a time that established and set the like stage for Jacksepticeye's fandom and other, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. really popular web creators fandoms. I think, uh, you know, Amazing Phil is a is a trailblazer. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's that's my vote. I we have our first disagreement. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, Let's go. I'm just as familiar with Markiplier as I'm, as I am with Amazing Phil, which is to say, not very. But I do feel like he is one of those figures that I have seen on more platforms, have seen talked about in in a greater variety of ways. Mm-hmm. Like I think that I think for me. So much of what I've personally seen about Amazing Phil has been as a unit with Dan and Phil, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also so interesting to me that he's on here and Dan is not, you know, implies that that Phil has his his own individual fandom. But I think I have seen Markiplier talked about so much through the years and talked about in a very, like, personal way, which I know people feel about Phil as well. And I know that people feel about Dan and Phil as well. But I I just Mm -hmm. have this feeling that, like, Markiplier is one of those people who has a little bit more of a, like, directly, uh, like, about him mm-hmm. relationship, which, like, yeah. this is, like, there are so many things that we're pro- we've probably said so far that are going to make people mad and write us and stuff. And, like, yeah, we're talking about fandoms that we are not in. So, like, yeah. take everything <laughs> with a grain of salt. Um, but for me, yeah, Markiplier feels like he's, like he looms a little bit larger in my head as a, as a YouTuber who is stretched beyond the bounds mm-hmm. of YouTube fandom. I, you know, that you changed my mind, Lauren, yes. with that, with that great case. I completely agree with you. I think the big thing is that, you know, people do, uh, they love Dan and Phil individually, but they are still largely viewed in like the context of uh, them being a unit. And I will also mention that Dan is on, we pulled a list. Lauren, I sent you the the top 20 so as not to overwhelm you, but the list goes down to 366. Um, <laughs> I will want to see that at some point. <laughs> and Dan is number 46. Okay. So not, it's not so far. Yeah. So we are now, we are now at our quarterfinals. We've got eight fandoms left. We're coming coming to the to the really tricky part of this now. Which pairing do you want to start with? Okay. 
Let's They're all do. Rough. <laughs> I know. I'm stressed. Let's do Taylor Swift and BTS. Ooh, jumping Ooh. right in with I think the I know, one. right? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I have no idea. Like my my yeah. like first gut interact, like gut reaction is to say BTS simply because mm-hmm. like they have become, in my opinion, one of the like largest fandoms in the entire world. Yeah, but also, I don't know if this is something that that Lindsay will be considering. But I didn't read this part of the description for the class or for this class project, I should say. But it does say. Past fandoms have included Dungeons and Dragons, fantasy football, professionally re- professional wrestling, Doctor Who, Pokemon, Twilight, The Bachelor, and BTS. Mm. So, is there a consideration to be made? Because we are doing this for Lindsay. Lindsay, this yes. is all for you. That Lindsay's professor will have presumably seen yeah. someone turn in BTS for a grade for this particular project. Mm. I don't want to disqualify BTS on that. I don't think that that's fair, but just something to kind of have in the mix. Where Where is your head at, Cherokee? We should keep BTS, like, you know, obviously keep them in the running. And then, you know, if they, if they end up winning this gauntlet, the second place can be, you know, Lindsay, if that's cool with you, you can mm-hmm. just do, if you're not, if you don't want to do BTS because it's been done, you'll have a list of our other, you know, semi-finalists and finalists to choose from. Mm-hmm. Uh, because again, this is just a list based on vibes uh, and, you know, well, not entirely yeah. on vibes. It is a, you know, some metrics started, to play here. <laughs> started, started with metrics, then got to vibes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a strong foundation of metrics mm-hmm, for our vibes mm-hmm. to rest upon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, would say my vote, Lindsay, is to not do BTS for your project because we want to keep it original, but let's keep BTS in the running for sanctity of the fandom gauntlet. The BTS army's impact is enormous, Huge. Huge. not just from a fandom perspective, but from a cultural influence perspective. I mean, if the BTS like fandom wants to do something and gets together to do it, like it friggin' gets done done yeah and i will say like you know like i think that sheer size and power and i and i feel like you know when you think of k-pop fandom which has become like over the past few years like k-pop is really synonymous with fandom and bts is synonymous with k-pop i think to that end i feel like we can kind of finish up this side of the bracket pretty quickly because our next pairing on the left side of our bracket which if you go to dashboarddiaries.tumblr.com you can see um Currently has the Markiplier versus Chris Evans, and then it'll be whoever that is versus BTS. And mm-hmm. I think that if it's a BTS versus Markiplier versus Chris Evans, I think there's like a clear winner there. Yeah. But between Markiplier and Chris Evans, like what do you, what is your feeling? I mean, it's hard because again, like I don't want to be a victim of my familiarity with Chris Evans versus Markiplier, where you know, like I am pretty familiar with his work and his fandom and how it engages. And I will say. Because of the fact that Chris Evans is often associated with, you know, Stucky Mm -hmm. and, you know, the titles that he's been in beyond Chris Evans as an individual, whereas Mark Plyer is like, there's a fandom around like him as well as the content he creates. I would say just like the ways that their fandom engages are just slightly engaged are just slightly different. And Mm -hmm. I think in terms of an individual having impact via the fandom that follows him, my vote is going to have to be Marco Plyer. Am I pronouncing that correctly? As far as I know. So I completely agree with this. I think that even though Chris Evans' presence on Tumblr in terms of of being talked about is much, much larger, I do think that Marco Plyer is like, probably a richer text in terms of like the diversity of stuff that's being posted and the, and the specific passions around his stuff. So I think he moves forward to yeah the, I guess the semifinals where mm-hmm. he is paired off against BTS, which to me feels like we can just move BTS. No offense yeah. to you, Mark, but like we can just move BTS right into the final. Yeah. Round. Put up a good fight, Mark, but yeah. yeah. Well, and Lindsay, you know, if if you look at the top or the top two and you, you know, you don't like either, you can just work your way out and maybe you'll yeah. end a Markiplier. You know, everybody's still in the running. We're not we're not the ones choosing this project, yeah. ultimately. Live your truth, Lindsay. Let's do Critical Role versus Undertale. Critical Role versus Undertale. All Both right. games in some Both. ways. Both games, and I think my vote here. Uh, similar 
justification to previously is going to be critical role simply because the impact of critical role and the exponential growth that we're also seeing around the fandom. I mean, I think we're going to like see critical role get even bigger over the next, you know, months, years, decades, centuries, etc. Uh, and so I think, yeah, my vote uh, is critical role, long winded answer. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. I, I think this comes down to volume of stuff to study. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that Critical Role fandom probably just has a lot greater volume. I think also because it's still ongoing, technically, mm -hmm. I think that there's more to dive into, which so we'll move Critical Role along. But that actually is perfect segue into the argument that I was saving for Our Flag Means Death, because our final semifinal round is Our Flag Means Death versus Supernatural. I didn't do this on purpose, Lindsay. I didn't mean to pit, pit your two suggestions Ooh. directly against each other at this stage, but I... I guess I did. I'm going to go. So here's, here's my argument for our flag means death. Okay. Not necessarily edging out Supernatural, but I just want to pose this argument, which is that Supernatural, cultural Tumblr juggernaut that it is, which we don't, which we know and we don't have to explain, is over <laughs> and has been over for uh, about a year and a half now, two years, right? And while the fandom is still incredibly active, and that is interesting in its own way, right? Like new content being made for something that is over. And obviously the Winchesters are kind of coming in now, mm -hmm. this new show on the CW. Our Flag Means Death is a current fandom and they are currently filming season two, which means that like footage or not footage, but like photos are coming from set for season two. So as Lindsay is doing this project this fall, there will be new stuff to look at. There will be new discussions, new speculation. So if that's mm -hmm. something that should be part of the project, I think our flag means death does have a slightly stronger stance in Supernatural simply because we know how Supernatural ends and therefore the fandom, certain things are are settled in canon, even if they're not necessarily accepted by the fandom or settled mm -hmm. in fan in fanon. I, I'm not saying that I'm like, I'm picking our flag means death, but I just like, I wanted to lay that out there. Yeah, I think that's a great argument. And I will, I, I will agree with you that, yeah, like there'll be new conversations and new fix, but the opinions and the conflicts, because the show is done, we're aware of those. And we know, you know people know where they fall, what have mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, Our Flag Means Death is like a growing and changing and more dynamic fandom, I would say, than yes, Supernatural. It. Choosing Our Flag Means Death is purely vibes. Like, it really metric-wise, yeah. it's a lot of speculation. Supernatural, it was initially pitched and written as a four-season arc. Right. It went 15 seasons as we mm -hmm. all know and that was largely because of the fandom if not entirely because of the power of the fandom and not only that but now i'm thinking about how supernatural integrated the fandom into their episodes yeah yeah gosh i mean also just in terms of amount to study yeah. supernatural is you can't you, know, you can't you can't beat it like really. you could just like i mean even like the that like the all the meta episodes like that we were talking about i mean that could be a big focus of the project in itself is like when fandom becomes canon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i think too like what hopping into the tag because i follow a lot of supernatural blogs so like i see a lot of supernatural stuff you mm -hmm. know just in my in my daily scrolling um but when I just like searched the tag on Tumblr, which I haven't done for Supernatural in a really long time, it was so many memes. Yeah. And like, I think that there's something really interesting to that, right? The fact that like Supernatural has transcended its existence as a TV show, as a fandom into a shared cultural language mm. in a way that I think is very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I also like I'm going to the fact that like Supernatural has its own convention. I think just in terms of like not vibes, but also metrics and just impact, yeah. it's it's going to we it's it going to be Supernatural. Yeah. So we got I there think, in the end. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny because like when I first put together this bracket, I was like, I think I probably know how this is going to end. And I think that it's probably how it's going to end. Are we looking? So it's Supernatural versus Critical Role. For this which, last semifinal, which I think Supernatural has the yeah, end. Sorry, Critical it does. Role. So then we've got a Supernatural versus BTS. Oh. And that's kind of exactly where I expect us to end up. Those are the two most obvious choices when you think of big fandoms on Tumblr. Yeah. And now I have absolutely, I like, I want to like end the show now because I'm like, I don't yeah. even want to touch this. Okay, bye. To, <laughs> we have to give Lindsay an answer. <laughs> okay. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Goodness me. So there's a few things that that I'm judging judging this on that just kind of like and I don't have I don't have an answer yet, but okay, so but I'm just going to like kind of lay out where each where each fandom has an edge. Supernatural mm-hmm. older title. You know, mm-hmm. been on the air since 06, BTS established in 2013. They're a little mm-hmm. more recent. BTS, the power of the fandom to impact culture is, I would say, unparalleled. I would say they have that over Supernatural. Supernatural, the power of the fandom to impact the canon and impact the title and the way that I think Supernatural changed the game for how audiences engage with titles they enjoy and Mm. with, you know, things that they love. And I really think that should be taken into consideration as well. I also think by pure numbers, BTS has it so high up on Supernatural. Yeah, double the amount of followers on Tumblr. Supernatural is a smaller but very like loud and dedicated fandom and if you're in it you're really in it same with bts but bts is such a big fandom that it has i think a lot more awareness outside of the bts fandom where people are like oh yeah i've heard of supernatural but they don't really like know how big of a fandom is you know a lot of my friends who may not be on tumblr or may not be you know really in the fandom space when i bring up supernatural they're like isn't that that cw show you know if you bring up bts they're like oh my god they're huge you know so i think yeah just from immediate name recognition from outside of the fandom as well, an argument could even be ventured that Supernatural set the stage for fandoms and the way they engage that the BTS fandom has kind of taken the torch in some ways. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I think this is like, even though they're, you know, there's definitely crossover between the fandoms, they are very separate fandoms. But I also, yeah, I think like putting some weight on Supernatural's foundational fandom roots like super fandom like super supernatural is one of the first things that i heard associated with the word fandom that's a really really good point and i think that like to bring in some more stats to this um we haven't really touched the ao3 numbers i did look up the number of fix for each of these fandoms and something that's interesting to me is supernatural had 257,709 fix in their tag on ao3 bts which started you know, eight years after Supernatural already has 185,922. And I mean, it should be stated that that AO3, you know, started after Supernatural, that Supernatural probably has a lot of stuff on fanfic.net, probably had a lot of stuff on LiveJournal. So like this, this 257 number is definitely low. But I I do think that's interesting that BTS has so much because I think when it comes to musical acts, Mm -hmm. other than One Direction, which was sort of, I guess, my first experience of seeing people ship fan members. Mm -hmm. Like, like when I think of Taylor Swift, I don't think of people like writing that much fan fiction. Like, I know it happens, right? But like, that's not really the the main way in which people engage with Taylor Swift. And so I, I think this would be my one argument for Supernatural, which is that like, when it comes to diversity of fan interaction, right? Like, how do they express their fandom? Supernatural feels like it has a larger variety of things. But I also don't know that that's true. And so this is where, like, yeah. listeners, please come into our ask box at dashboarddiaries.tumblr.com. And if you're a BTS fan, please let us know how you engage with your fandom and how you see people engage with with the BTS fandom. Send us an ask and we'll publish that so that Lindsay has some more uh, material to work with. Because, yeah, again, like, I'm part of the Supernatural fandom, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I work with Misha Collins. Like, I am very aware of Supernatural and all of the edges of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just not as aware of BTS. And so I think that, like, yeah. where I might think that the BTS fandom is interacting with BTS in the way that, like, I think of musical f- fandoms interacting with musical acts, that they're it's probably much, much broader than that and, yeah. and much richer than I'm I'm sort of giving it credit for. Yeah, I to- I totally and I, I like the other thing I that came to mind is yeah, like fan cams. That is a, you know, yes, really yeah. unique way that people engage. It's such a thing into itself and I don't know if that started with BTS, but it is definitely a K-pop fandom thing that has now expanded beyond beyond K-pop. Um but I do think that's just another, you know, that's a new, unique people way that people engage. Um and it's god, it's so hard to make this call, Lauren. I think it's so hard. I think I'm leaning towards Supernatural. Interesting. For... Oh, I was leaning towards BTS. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so I, I'm going with fandom longevity, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. fandom impact on f- 
the existence of fandom as a whole, which I mm. think also BTS is a big contender for. Absolutely. Uh, but, but Supernatural but, just has that, that earlier edge, Yeah, it right? really They've was like around longer. Uh, early adapter stage setting kind of edge. Uh, and God, it's so hard to make this call. And I'm like, wonder if I'm partially biased just because of the way that I've engaged with Supernatural over the years is significantly more than the way that I've engaged with BTS over the years. But yeah, I'm leaning towards Supernatural. But as you know, I am not, it's not like I'm drawing a hard line here. You know, this is very, I can be swayed. So I also think that, you know, there is something to consider in the fact that that when Lindsay sent the original email, Supernatural was sort of the the front runner in terms of choice for this project. And BTS, as we mentioned, was done in a previous semester in this class. So I mm-hmm. do think that that gives Supernatural a little bit of an edge because we're supposed to be choosing the project, not the ultimate Tumblr fandom. And I mean, yeah, like if we're going by from numbers, like a numbers game, I mean, this list that we've even talked about would be totally different, right? You know, like yes, we even yeah. when I initially sent the list, I was like, I mean, BTS is number one, right? You know, like it's yeah, and it's, it's on just there like twice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so it's on there twice, and both like they both had so many weekly, and both of those you know features had so many weekly features that I think by and large, if it's a numbers game, no question, BTS is the answer. And also they have a really engaged fandom, a really interesting fandom, a really powerful and impactful fandom, um, a really well-coordinated fandom. Mm-hmm. Um, really emotionally invested. That's something yeah. we haven't really talked about because it's just sort of, it's just par for the course for both of these fandoms. Yeah. Um, but I will, like, I think from, I still keep getting kind of pulled back to Supernatural um, for for the winner here because of, it's fandom roots. It's roots not only in Tumblr, but also just in online fandom. I think Super Supernatural feels like a world heritage fandom, you know? Totally. <laughs> Which BTS is becoming, again, from pure vibes, from fandom, like, age, impact, all that kind of stuff. The fact that, you know, the show went on for 15 seasons because of its fandom. I think I agree with that. I think, I think Supernatural is going to be the winner for me for specifically Lindsay's project yes. um, because we don't have the confirmation it's been done in the past. And also there is the most stuff to look at. I mean, there have been so many books written about Supernatural, all that kind of stuff. So I guess an, an unsurprising winner. And Lindsay, we've just said yes to an answer you posed to us of should I do Supernatural? <laughs> <laughs> but I hope One hour maybe, later. <laughs> yeah, perhaps perhaps this will uh, will give you some some interesting insights, some places to, to start your, your research. Or maybe you've heard about a fandom here that is interesting to you and you want to go a complete dark horse direction and pick, you know, Homestuck or something. Yeah. We support that. Please let us know. Um, I'll be emailing you. So um, yeah, l- let us know what you choose. And and for all of our other listeners, please, yeah, pop in and, and tell us how uh, how you engage with these particular fandoms. We know that we probably got a lot of stuff wrong. That's not the <laughs> point. But we would love to hear your enthusiasm for yeah. these fandoms that you're a part of. Yeah. And, Devin, and also, Lindsay, if you want to, you know, want to send us your final project when you're done and you're yes, able to please. share it so we can check it out, maybe read some excerpts in, in an episode later this season. That would be wonderful. Would also love awesome. to know what other, you know, what other classmates did. Uh, I'm just really, I, I also want to take this class. And also, can you ask your professor uh, if we can sit in on a yeah. class? Can we audit? Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, that is our fandom gauntlet achieved. We mm. got it. Mm. So now that we have determined the ultimate fandom of all time, uh, no arguments, you know, all of that stuff, <laughs> definitely, completely, objectively, scientifically decided. Mm. Yes. Let's uh, The only correct let's, answer is The only correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, you know, slow down and uh, do what we do at the end of every episode, which is our feels corner and talk about what's giving us feelings this week. Cherokee, what do you have for me? I just started watching Industry. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, I've heard with of this, this show. show. I've not yeah. watched it. So I'd like heard whisperings of it, and uh, you know, like people, you know, I'd seen, seen it mentioned. It was like featured on my HBO uh, like homepage this week, so I decided to watch it. And essentially, it is like a very like secession style, maybe a little younger skewing that essentially chronicles the high stress world of banking and investing. Mm-hmm. I've been really enjoying it, and like you know, blitzing through it the last couple of weeks. I like the other day, I was like, you know, you like when you're you're like working, and you're like, it's two p.m. I have four more hours of work before I can watch industry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> yeah, I have four more hours of work before I watch someone bank for three hours. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, so I would say industry has really gotten me in my field corner. I don't really think it, it's like pulled at my heartstrings. It's pretty like intense show and a lot of the characters are kind of assholes, but lovable, lovable assholes. I'm rooting for them all. It's fun to watch. What about you, Lauren? I don't think I've mentioned this on the show yet. Maybe I have. But um, my partner and I are watching all of Star Trek The Next Generation. And we've just started season three. And I just like, we've watched tons of episodes this week. It's just been one of those weeks that have have been so chaotic. And so, you know, it's just been nice to kind of like curl up with a a, a nice TV show from the 80s. And I... I just really love it. The found family vibes are impeccable. All the characters are so complex and interesting. The moral questions being posed in each episode are so interesting. I've been like a very, very casual Star Trek viewer up until this point. I've seen like some of the original series. I've seen the new movies and that's it. And it's something that, you know, amidst all the the, the craziness of life and stuff uh, is just a real balm. So that's yeah. been bringing me lots of comfort recently. Wonderful. And that's it for us this week. I'm Lauren Shippen, and you can find me at thelaurenshippen.tumblr.com. And I'm Cherokee McAnally. You can find me at chero.tumblr.com. This has been Dashboard Diaries, and may your anons always be loving, your dash always refreshed, your gifts always be loading, and your ships always canon. May the fix you're reading always be finished, and the answers you seek always in the reblogs. Thanks for scrolling with us.